Well, friends, so now we'll continue with the charging provisions. That's section 9 of CGST Act. We are going to learn the basic things you have covered in your last session. I'm going to share the screen with you. Just a minute. Yeah, is it visible to you now? Screen is visible. Yes or no? Please keep on responding. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Please keep on responding. You see. So once this our fundamental understanding is over, now we'll be able to understand the provisions of section 9 of CGST Act and section 5 of the IGST Act. As I told from the very beginning, these are the two sections we are going to learn. Small sections. Section 9 uh, is having around five subsections. We'll be learning one by one. The first we'll see section 9, which talks about the levy and collection of taxes. So section 9, subsection 1, if you read, let us read it carefully, minutely if you read. You see, subject to the provisions of subsection 2. So what is coming in the subsection 2, we are going to learn. I repeat, subject to the provisions of subsection 2, there shall be levied a tax called the central goods and services tax on all interested supplies of goods or services or more. Okay, the first aspect of the first uh, part says there shall be levied a tax. So definitely tax will be levied. So that power is there in this particular section. Tax shall be levied and that tax will be called as CGST, Central Goods and Services Tax. On, on which transaction it will be levied? On all interested supplies. Therefore, you can see in all interested supplies, invariably there will be some CGST. Okay unless there are some exemptions which are there we are going to learn so you can find an interested supplies when cgst is there you find cgst as well as SGST. and here since we are learning cgst act we are talking about cgst now okay so there shall be levied a tax called cgst on all interested supplies of goods or services or both now it says except on supply of alcoholic liquor for human consumption. Okay, that means alcoholic liquor is exempted. Okay, that is exempted. And on which this tax will be levied? On the value determined under section 15. So now there is a need to understand what is the value determined under section 15. Okay, right, uh, we should have learnt it in the last session. We have not learnt it. I will be telling you what is the value. And how it will be levied at such rate, not exceeding 20%. So maximum rate is 20%. So law has given the power 20%. But how much of all this interested supplies normally, how much of CGST is levied? What is the rate? Who can tell me? What is the normal rate you find in most of the cases? Raj Dilak, can you say what is the normal rate of CGST? In initial classes, I had shown you some uh, invoices also. Raj Dilak, it seems you are not listening. Ratikant, can you say? Yes, can you reply? Yes, sir. 18%, sir. Yeah. Yes, can you reply? What is the normal CGST rate you find in most of the cases? Most of the transactions? Sir, 18%? 18%? That's 9%. 9%. Okay, it is 9%. CGST part is 9%. 18% CGST, SGST taken together. Oh, IGST is 18%, you can say. Most of the cases. There are other rates are also there. Okay, right. So here we are talking about, the government says the maximum rate should not exceed 20%. 20 as may be notified by the central government on the recommendation of the council and collected in such manner as may be prescribed and shall be paid by the taxable person. So this shall be collected in a prescribed manner 
and it shall be paid by the taxable person. Okay, right. So it will be collected. This power is given. Now you have to see one thing we have to understand. This tax will be computed as a percentage on the value. And what is that value that is described in section 15? So quickly I will be telling you what is this section 15. Or oh, section 15 I have not explained you. Now let me take a minute to explain what is section 15. Yeah, section 15 passed let us say. So section 15 says what is the value of taxable supply? Once you know this, let us say we know CGST is 9%. This 9% has to be applied on the value. So we should know what is the value. First of all, you see the normal value is the transaction value. We have to pick up the transaction. Then what is the value of the transaction? But we can pick up the transaction value, but subject to some conditions. The conditions we have to see what is there in section 15. If these conditions are not met, the transaction value cannot be taken. Okay, there is a valuation rule for GST. We'll be referring to that. That we'll be learning uh, at the latter stage. Now we have to understand what is this transaction value or the value for taxable supply. The value of supply of goods or services or both shall be the transaction value. What is the transaction value? Which is the price actually paid or payable in a particular transaction if some price is paid or payable for the same supply of goods and services or both where supplier and recipient of the supply are not related. If they're related, if there's a related party, if something is sold by one person to another person, something is supplied by one person to another person. Some goods are supplied from one person to another person, but they're related. If they're related, the price cannot be construed at transaction value because there's a possibility that relationship may affect the price. Product might be 100 rupees, but it might be sold at 50 rupees. Right? So that is the transaction value that if they're not related, then that value can be taken. So price actually paid or payable to the said goods, uh, supply of goods or services, or both where the supply and recipient of supply are not related. You have to see this, who is the supplier, who is the recipient of the supply, if they're not related. And price is the sole consideration for supply. There is no other consideration flowing from the recipient to the supplier. Okay, if there is some other consideration is flowing, that is some other favor is let us have made by the recipient to the supplier. Then the value is not the right, the right value. Suppose I am selling, a supplier is selling him some goods at 100 rupees, but he is taking some favor from the recipient. The worth of that favor is against 40 rupees. That means effectively the value of the goods is 100 plus 40, 140 rupees. Are you getting? Are you getting? What is the meaning of transaction value? Transaction value means the price actually paid or payable, or you can say it is a the transaction value between two unrelated parties where price is the sole consideration. There is no other consideration. Then only we can take that value as transaction value. Okay? If that is over, now we will be again coming to this subsection 1 of section 9. Huh. The tax shall be levied on the value determined under section 15. And at such rates, not exceeding 20%. Did you understand this first provision? Section 1 of, subsection 1 of section 9. Did you understand this? Then I'll move to the next one. Yes or no? Tell me quickly. Can you reply? Can some of you reply quickly? Is it clear to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So please keep on replying. You can unmute your speakers in between when something is asked to you. All right. Now, now coming to subsection 2, it talks about the central tax and supply of 
these items. As you can see, there are five items here. Okay, there are five items. Can you read these five items? Please, some of you read. Aditi, please read these five items, what we're talking about. Uh, the central tax on the supply of uh, petroleum crude, high speed diesel, motor spirit, commonly known as petrol, uh, natural gas, and aviation turbine fuel yeah. shall be yeah. levied uh, uh, with effect, uh, uh, with effect levied from such state? state as may be notified by the as government. may be notified by the government on the recommendations of the council. Yes. Now you see. Subsection 1 talks about that this uh, CGST will be levied on all goods, almost all supplies except alcoholic liquor for human consumption. Now, subsection 2 says these are the five items. Right? These five items are commonly referred to as petroleum product. Number one, crude petroleum, HSD, that is high speed diesel, motor spirit, understood as petrol, natural gas and ATF, understood as aviation turbine fuel, ATF. These are the five items. On these items, what happens? CGST shall be levied with effect of such date as may be notified by the government. Till now, government has not notified. So as you can see, GST is not there on these products. So these five products, on the basis of recommendation of the council, government will notify. Then only, it can come under GST permit. Right? So right now, GST is not there on these five products. So alcoholic uh, liquor for human consumption, if there is excluded in subsection one, and these items, these five products are excluded in subsection two. Okay, now coming to subsection three, it says, the government may on recommendation of council by notification, specify categories of supply of goods or services or both, the tax on which shall be paid on reverse charge basis by the recipient. By the recipient of such goods, services, or both. That means here it is saying the government has now has got the power on the basis of recommendation received from GST and GST Council. Government may specify that these category of supplies of goods or uh, services will come under RCM. RCM means reverse charge mechanism. The if it is coming under reverse charge mechanism, then tax shall be paid by the recipient. Okay. If that is so, then all provisions of the act shall be applying to that recipient as if he is the person who is liable to pay GST. Okay. It will be considered like this as if he is the person who is liable, who is liable to pay GST. So the third subsection talks about RCA. So three subsections we cover, all uh, another two things we are going to cover. First one is you see it talks about that CGST can be levied on all products, maximum is 20% and alcoholic liquors are excluded. Second pro provision says that uh, five petroleum products are also excluded, are not exactly excluded, it, it will be included when government notified. Then subsection 3 talks about that uh, on the basis of recommendation of the council, government specifies where RCM will be applicable. Right? Government specifies the supply of certain goods or services or both where RCM will be applicable. Now coming to fourth provision. Government may, fourth is also something related, related point. The government may, on recommendation of the council, by notification, specify a class of registered persons who shall, in respect of supply of specified categories of goods or services or both, receive from unregistered suppliers. Meaning, I again stop here to explain you this concept. Watch it carefully. Listen here carefully. So, central government may by notification specify that a class of registered person who shall receive from unregistered person. That means if a registered person receiving some supplies from unregistered person, he shall pay tax on reverse charges. 
is a registered person receiving something from the registered person. He shall pay tax on reverse charge basis as the recipient of such supplies of goods or services or both. If that is so, then all the provisions of the Act shall apply to such recipient. Recipient is paying an RC. Okay. Now all the provisions of the law will be applicable to him as if he is the person who is liable to pay that. Okay. The situation you have to remember, there is a registered person who is receiving some specific goods or services from unregistered person and he has got a liability to pay this under RCA. Okay. Right? If you elaborate this subsection, it says when the registered person receives goods and services, then the receiver has to pay the tax to government or reverse charge basis. There are three main features of this particular subsection. Recipient of the goods or services should be registered person. If recipient is not registered, then this particular provision doesn't apply. Second aspect is that supplier of goods and services should be unregistered. If supplier is also registered, then also it's not. Supplier should be unregistered. And the supplier should be for taxable goods and services. The goods and services. So this is that tax is levyable on. If these three features are met, then uh, the recipient has to pay under RC. Under section 9, subsection. Okay, if I elaborate that thing, you see, you can watch this table. You see, a recipient is registered, supplier is registered, and nature of supply is taxable. Tell me whether section 94 is applicable or not. First case. Whether 94 is applicable or not. Keep on replying. Others, can you reply? First case. Can you reply? So, yeah, anyone can reply now. So, others has uh, replied in the chat box. Okay. Okay, others please reply. Any other person? Any other person can reply now. So that others can listen. Others is having poor net connection. Okay. Yeah, any of you can speak. Have you understood this provision? Yes or no? Or should I repeat it? I'm repeating the provision. Now try to understand it carefully. Okay, it is important for us to understand these provisions. Similar kind of questions may be asked if I want to test your skill. Questions may be asked in different forums. Otherwise also, it is important for us to understand in which situation RCA may be applicable. I told you this provision of section 9.4. It says, when a registered person receives goods and services from an unregistered person, okay, in that case only, section 94 can be applicable. Three aspects are here. First is that the recipient should be unregistered. The recipient should be registered person. Supplier should be unregistered person. Third thing is that supply is taxable. Then only 9.4 can apply. A central government can specify that these are the goods or services 
to which RCM is applicable. So first one, first condition, recipient registered, supplier unregistered, and supply is taxable. On that basis, I am asking you this question. First situation you see, recipient is registered, supplier is registered, nature of supply is taxable product, taxable supply, whether section 9.4 is applicable or not. Applicable or not applicable? You have to say. No, sir. No. Uh, not applicable. Not, not applicable. What is situation two? Recipient registered. Supplier registered. Nature of supply not, not taxable. Sir, not applicable. Not applicable. Third case you can say. Registered recipient. Unregistered supplier. Products are taxable. So applicable. Applicable. Fourth case. Registered recipient. Unregistered supplier, but products are not taxable. Not applicable. Not applicable. Not applicable. Not applicable. Next case you can see registered recipient. Sorry, unregistered recipient, registered supplier, products are taxable. So not applicable. Not applicable. Next case. Unregistered recipient, registered supplier, and nature of supply is not taxable. So not, not applicable. Next case, unregistered recipient, unregistered supplier, nature of supply is taxable. Applicable or not? Not applicable. No, not sir. A, not applicable. Next point. Unregistered recipient, <laughs> unregistered supplier, nature of supply is non taxable. What will happen? Not applicable. Not applicable. Not applicable. So, this is the concept. All that you have to remember only in one situation, RCM will be applicable. If central government notifies under section 9.4, what is that? Recipient should be registered and supplier should be what? Supplier should be unregistered. Supplier should be unregistered. And the sub item should be taxable. The supplier should be taxable. Okay. So it's important for us to note that if unregistered person receives goods from and services from an unregistered person, both are unregistered, then also this provision doesn't apply. Only when the registered person receives from unregistered supplier, then only this provision applies. Okay. So, understanding is required in this section. Otherwise, you may not be able to take a decision whether you have to pay under RCM or not. So that knowledge is necessary. Okay. So, now for Subsection, subsection 9 we have already covered. Now we are coming to subsection 5. This is also important for us. Section 9 has got 5 subsections. This is the last subsection we are going to learn. It says the government may, on the recommendation of the council, by notification specify the categories of services, the tax on interested supplies of which shall be paid by electronic commerce operators, if such services are supplied through it, that means if there is some interested supplies, okay, and these supplies are made through electronic commerce operators, right, then only central government may not, on the basis of recommendation of the council, specify the categories of uh, central government, then only in that kind of situation can specify. What it can specify? What it can specify? Can you read this provision? The your voice specify. is breaking. I'm not able to hear you. Voice is breaking? Same, so. Okay, okay. Just a minute. I will do one thing. Okay, friends, I think uh, now it will be clearly audible. Right. We are discussing about uh, subsection 9, sorry, subsection 5 of section 9, where it says it talks about the e commerce operators. Right. It's, in fact, it talks about in some specific situations. It's the responsibility of e commerce operator to pay GST. What is that situation you have to see? The central government may, on recommendation of the council, by notification specify the categories of services, the tax on interested supplies of which shall be paid 
by e-commerce operators, right? If such supplies, if such services are supplied to it, if some e-commerce supplier is made has made some supplies, interested supplies, then he will be responsible to uh, pay the GST amount, pay the CGST amount on this, right? If that is so, then all the provisions of the Act shall be applicable to e-commerce operator as if he is liable to make the payment. Okay, so fifth position talks about e-commerce operator. Okay, there are uh, two provisions to this particular section. First provision says that uh, where the e-commerce operator doesn't have any physical presence in the taxable territory. Right, let us say some particular e-commerce operator is, doesn't have any physical existence in the taxable territory, let's say physical existence in India. Then any person representing such electronic commerce operator for any purpose in the taxable territory shall be liable to pay tax. That means if by any chance, for any reason, e-commerce operator doesn't have any presence in India, then any person who is representing him, he will be liable to pay tax. Right. And second provider also says, if that is also not there, that means if the uh, electronic commerce uh, operator doesn't have a physical presence in the taxable territory, also doesn't have a representative. What to do? Here the law says that the e-commerce operator shall appoint a person in the taxable territory for the purpose of paying tax and such person shall be liable to pay tax. Right. So e-commerce operator in this kind of situation need to have a physical presence. If he doesn't have any physical presence in the taxable territory, then there should be some person in the taxable territory who is representing the e-commerce operator. If that is not there, then e-commerce operator shall has to, he has to appoint a person who will be responsible for paying tax on behalf of this e-commerce operator. So this is the Subsection 5, this is the provision of section 5. Okay, section uh, 15 I have discussed. Now, if these five points you have covered, now you have to analyze these five points one by one. So quickly first, let me recapitulate all these things, then the analysis will become easy. First of all, it talks about uh, that CG central government has got power to levy GST, to levy CGST. Maximum rate is uh, 20 percent, but uh, alcoholic liquor for human consumption are excluded. That is one point. Second subsection talks about the five petroleum products like uh, petroleum crude, HST, motor spirit, natural gas, and ATF. Uh, they have not yet been included in the GST. Third point says in certain situations, central government may also specify that reverse charge mechanism will be applicable. If recipient is a registered person and supplier is an unregistered person. The, yeah, in certain, third provision says, in such specific situation, reverse charge uh, mechanism will be applicable. Yeah, fourth subsection says, what I told you just now, that reverse charge mechanism can be applicable in some specific situation when the recipient is a registered person, supplier is an unregistered person. These examples we had seen it. Fifth talks about in some specific situations again, uh, CGST can be paid uh, by e commerce operators. GST can be paid by e commerce operator. E -commerce operator has to have a person, has to have physical presence or there should be a person representing the e-commerce operator in the taxable territory or e-commerce operator has to appoint a person in the taxable territory. Up to this we have understood. What is value of supply we have understood. Broadly it is transaction value. Now we'll start analyzing this thing. So a few basic concepts we'll cover it today. Next class then we'll extend our analysis. First of all, different rates of CGST are there. Okay, might be 0%, 0.125%, 0.1.5%, 2.5%, 6%, 9%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 14%, 
coming to value on which that percentage will be applicable we have to see the transaction value but when we see the transaction value we have to see the price should be between to unrelated person and price should be the sole consideration for that supply okay that value has to be taken alcoholic liquor is uh, not covered alcoholic liquor on human consumption is outside the purview of gst okay usually igst figure is uh, same as cgst plus sgst taken together suppose cgst is 9% sgst is 9% in case of interstate supplies where igst will be levied igst will be 9% plus 9% plus 18% so law has prescribed the maximum rate of igst will be 40% that will maximum cgst you know 20% the igst can be 20% 20% plus 20% can be 40% when goods are imported into india the igst will be levied we also know this concept for the beginning but this igst will be levied as per the provisions of section 3 of customs tariff act 1975 on that basis igst will be levied on import goods friends so how we got disconnected let me try once again to share the screen with you are you able to listen to me now yes sir okay just a minute just a minute let me share the screen yeah this is what i was talking about i think up to this you have already listened you have un understood that maximum rate of igst will be 40% okay now when goods are imported into india igst shall be levied as per section 3 of customs tariff act 1975 and additional custom duty additional custom duty shall be levied as per the provisions of customs tariff act 1975 or when goods are imported into india igst shall be levied plus additional uh, custom duty where applicable that is also going to be levied okay and also we know that these are the five items which have not been included uh, from in the gst purview petroleum crude hst motor spirit natural gas aviation fuel etc so this is up to this some at basic level we have understood this section 9 some more analysis has to be made okay in detail we will again understand after that we will go to section 5 of igst act that also we will be learning with that we will be able to cover the entire charging section so we'll stop here today we'll catch up again in your next class if you have any query right now just raise that query otherwise uh, we'll close this session any query you have no sir okay thank you very much we'll catch up in your next session okay we'll continue from this if possible just go through the section 9 the basic things so that we'll be able to analyze this provision only five provisions you have learned today okay section 9 1 2 3 4 5 and to understand this section some basic understanding is required and uh, some terms that also we are covered so in detail we will be again doing analysis in our next class thank you very much thanks a lot thank you sir thank you